Hmm, good day, Tragic here. I am back for Arkham Horror. Turn two! Let's get into this before all the kids come home and I have to deal with them. So, boom. A uh, little mistake, by the way. Uh, when she went to the street, it's actually East Town, not here. Okay, let's do this. You blam. And I need to be more careful. A lot of these people only have one focus. And then some people have plus focus over here. So we've got plus focus here. We've got a plus focus here. So I've got to be careful about what I'm doing with my focusing. Anyway, let's start with Zoe. Zoe has one clue and two dollars. Now, first thing is during the upkeep, we do this ability here. And this is excellent for this particular monster. The goat has a toughness of one. We have two toughness worth of uh, agents. So we lose one agent and we lose the hexagon monster back to the hexagon cup. Nice. Okay. Now, I think she's just going to go... How much? She's got three movement. Oh yeah, and she would have needed four movement actually to get there as well. Because she started over here. So that's one, two, three, four, not one, two, three. For some reason, I always think that connected because I'm an idiot. Okay. Anyway, let's, uh, let's get back into this. What are we doing? Uh, we need weapons for her. Oh, actually, we don't need weapons. We've got tons of weapons. I think she can just go... One, two, and three to the witch house. Oh, see this happens sometimes with tabletop simulator. This, when you pick up multiple objects or you drop objects and things, it takes the scale of the, uh, the object you've picked up. See how it scaled that really huge? It's very annoying. I don't know. It's a bug in the in the application. It's nothing to do with my mod. Whatever. Roland Banks. He has... Okay. So Roland Banks. I'm going to send him one, two, three to downtown. And while he's there, he's going to drop two clues and place a new agent. And while he's there, I think I'm actually going to stop there and pick up my first bass token, which requires uh, $2. Okay. Now, to keep your bass token, you have to basically not use your focus. But his focus is pretty much where we want it, I'm sure, for a while. So we're going to take that bass token. And I want to load up on bass tokens because I think... With the agents and the bass tokens, we can basically control the monsters a lot easier. We're going to be using a lot of time bomb explosions, shove Nigrath to grab things, and then using Ashcan Pete to recur those back out of those decks. So it's going to be it's going to be quite an interesting sort of technical game. This one where we're using a lot of the powers in unusual ways. But the start is to get those bass tokens. So I think I might do that with a lot of characters this turn, but I'm going to hoover up the remaining clues first. This guy has four clues. He needs one clue to get enough to seal. So he's going to go one, two, three to the witch house. And he's going to go one, two, three and put his lore up using his focus, because then you're, the Twilight Lodge is usually a law test. Leo Anderson, oh, he's just gonna go one, two, three, and pick up three clues. Wow, does he? He's already got four. Oh well, three clues it is. Boom, he should go seal a gate next turn. Uh, he needs two movement for that. Uh, he needs three for that. So we're just going to focus him up by one. Pete is going to go 
Now, okay, so the bottom of the thing is the Tommy gun, which we do want, but we also need to get this Elder Sign. We can peek at the bottom of the decks with him. So he's going to, I think he's going to stay where he is. He does have $6. How much does the, how much does the thing cost? Uh, how much does the, God, how much does this cost? $7. So he actually needs more money. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so we're going to leave this luck here and we're going to use his speed. He has three focus, so it's one, two. That gives him five transport and boom, give him one extra lore. I don't think there's any point in doing that, actually. So we're just going to put him to five transport and he's going to go one, two, three, four, five to Twilight Lodge. And during that movement, he's going to give him eight bucks like so and i think he'll take the minority report oh you know what it'll also take the tommy gun yep okay so ashcan's gonna stay where he is lily okay we basically run out of clues down here we've run out of clues on the board completely so i think she's going to Stay where she is, spend two clues, uh, two uh, coins and two clues. She's going to take a bass token. You yeah, Actually, you know what? She's a terrible person to use a bass token because if she has a bass token, she can't use her ability up here, which requires focus. So let's give her her two bucks back. And she'll go one, two to the administration building, try and get some money. And then we'll use her focus to go up one. That increases her maximum uh, health to five and gives her a plus one to her actual stamina. It also reduces her maximum to six, which drops her to six uh, sanity. Okay, just to recap what happened. She used one focus to go up here. Oh, let's do it twice. So she goes one, two, right? That sets her stamina to six. And that gives her plus two stamina. So she's now at four stamina. So that's her stamina recovered. But also sets her maximum sanity to five, like so. And I think... I'll just leave it like that. I think I don't think I'll do anything else with her. Okay, this girly girl is... She's got no clues, no money. Oh, we spent two clues, didn't we? So we'll put a one agent in Uptown. And she'll go... One, two, three to the hospital. Actually, no to the magic shop. No. Where am I going to send her? Right, I'm back. The magic of editing, man. It is actually the next day. But I, I didn't get it done in time before they came home. But luckily I didn't because someone remarked on the comment section of the last video. I think it was Scott, who's an old-time viewer. He's been around since my other channel, right at the start of the Mage Knight stuff good bloke he's a good rules lawyer catches me on a lot of my errors but look at this draw one skill but stay here next turn so she is actually delayed so floop. that means she just goes flip and she's back up and uh, that is that but we still need to do her rolling for her blessing so anything except a one would be nice here yeah. oh great so that is a one she loses a blessing. What a great start. We're not having the best of luck, are we? I'm going to keep her on high luck at the Historical Society. And in fact, you know, I'm going to use one focus to just move down one, just so we can uh, have a little bit more. We want to start moving into law. Five luck is still pretty high. Okay. And finally, we have Hank, who is here. And... 
I think Hank is actually going to go one, two, three, four to the Twilight Lodge. And he is going to take the Tommy gun like so, just so he's got another, uh, another weapon. Okay. And we're back at Zoe, so now it's time to do our drawings. Yablamo! Okay, where, where are we? Which house? The ancient witch Keza Monson appears before you. Make a will minus two check. If you pass, she teaches you something of value. Draw a spell. If you fail, she casts a terrible spell upon you and you are cursed. Uh, now, I think the fail... Oh, it's only if Mary gets cursed that she fails this. Okay. So... Her will is four, so she actually has two die and nothing to help. Come on. Come on. We do not want to be cursed. Curse is bad. Curse is bad! Yes. Done. Uh, and we get a spell. Nice. You blammo. Shriveling. Oh, look at that. Shriveling. Someone already has. Uh, who is it? we got Wither already up here. So Wither and Shriveling is a good combo. For one Sanity loss, you can get nine, nine uh, dice. Whatever, what am I talking about? That's it, done, yonk, next. Okay, this guy is in the street and technically you're supposed to buy the, the thing or whatever of Bast while we're in the street. He's still got $3, so I don't think he's actually paid for that. So let's just do that now. I want to start getting a lot more bass tokens out. Because uh, pretty soon we want to start corralling people and then slowly killing them with the agents. Okay, Joe Diamond is at the Twilight Lodge. Ya blamo. Care to join the order? We do not have $3, unfortunately. So that's the end of that. If you accept, pay $3. If you decline, pass a will minus one check, which is one die. Oh, no, we've got a plus one will here. So I can roll a second die. I'll just roll one more die. Come on, come on, come on! That's two fails. If you decline, lose three stamina as the henchman assists you to the door. Three stamina is a huge hit. We have five clues. I'm going to take that hit because we need to start sealing gates. Leo is at the science building. As you enter the Department of Alchemy, a professor looks up in horror. He grabs an ancient artifact from a locked drawer in his desk and holds it up before your face, chanting and making symbolic motions with the item. If you are cursed, discard the curse. If you are not cursed, you are blessed. Awesome. So that's blessed. You blamo. And uh, that's the end of that. Don't even need to roll. That is awesome. But you know what else happens? Over here it says, each time an investigator is blessed, put a clue token. Your bammo, if there's, oops, oops uh, that's not a clue, that's a clue. If uh, if we have two, then she passes. That's awesome. Okay, Trash Can Pete. Now he is going to draw from the bottom of the item deck. That's going to get the Tommy gun. And if I remember correctly, the next two, the next item is the makeup kit, which we don't really care about. So we are going to draw another two from the top. Oh, flamethrower and the dark cloak. They're both awesome. Uh, you know what? The dark cloak might actually be better. Don't we have someone who's a super duper hider person? Here we are, sneak plus one with camouflage and conceal. So our uh, sneaky spy here. So the reason I'm thinking about all this sneak is because I'm starting to think a really good combo is time bomb plus the bast token, right? Plus the uh, plus uh, this guy, Ashcan Pete, being able to redraw the time bomb. 
So we'll be able to use, I want to have someone with a high sneak. It would be better if it was actually this guy because he's got six sneak. What's better? This guy's got four sneak. Five sneak. Plus he's got the evade check. I don't know. I don't know who's better to make our sneaker, but the idea is I want someone who can say, say this place was had a tons more monsters. I want someone who can go in, drop the, the token and then get out and just sneak past whatever monsters are in there. So, you know, the plus one sneak is actually not a bad choice here, but we also got a flamethrower, which is plus seven to combat. And we've got a Tommy gun, which is plus six to combat. So, there's really good items here. Ah, how much we got? We got 14. Okay, I think I'm going to take the flamethrower. One, one, two, three, four, five, six. Take the flamethrower, but I think that means we're still going to stay here another turn and draw both those items. Are we going to stay here for a while? Okay, she is at the administration building, Yablamo. Talking with one of the professors, he seems very interested in your intellectual potential and offers to sponsor you for a partial scholarship. You may pay him $4 to draw two skills, keeping one of them discarded the other. Oh, $4! Yes, we are perfectly. Bam, so that is two skills. And we can keep one of these skills. Give us a... Mystic Gift. After making any spell check, spend two clue tokens to add one success to the result. You may do this as often as you like. Or we just get a plus war. See, this is interesting. I mean, is linguistics worse than Mystic Gift? Mystic Gift is guaranteed spell check successes, right? You just spend two clues, you get one. But plus one law gives us a better law. They'll give us five law if we have law maxed out. Plus, when we spend one clue, we get to roll two dice. So, yeah, I don't know. What are we talking about here? I think I'm going to take law. Boom. Awesome. Okay, and at the Historical Society, there's a bug in my code here. See how the this didn't automatically despawn? You find a book with two of its pages stuck together. Pass a luck minus one check to pull them apart without damaging them. Between the two pages is a magical incarnation. Draw one spell. If you fail the check, you tear the pages and ruin the incarnation. We have a luck of five, so that is four luck. We have no additional lucky things. Yeah, blamo. And that's a pass. So we gain a spell, basically. Your blammo. Wither. Double wither. Perfect. That is awesome. Okay, so she's ready to start murdering things. Okay, Hank. He is also at the Twilight Lodge, and he actually has money, so it's a real shame he didn't get the, the thing. Make a sneak minus two check. If you pass, you slip into the Temple of the Lodge and find two items of interest. Our sneak is one. Oh, I forgot to tap this for $2. Oh, exhaust instead of spending $2, not gain $2. Um, I'm going to take $4 off him. I don't know how many times I've done that wrong. Whatever. Where am I? I should send him to get a bass token because it's free for him. Uh, where was I? Make a sneak minus two check. If you pass, roll a die for each item. On a success, draw a unique item. Otherwise, draw a common item. Okay, so we have a sneak of one. That means it's an automatic fail. I'm going to spend one clue and roll. Come on. Come on. I really want this. I want this. I want it. I want it. Okay, it's a fail. I'm going to do one more. Come on. Bam! Come on. Come on! Come on! Oh! <laughs> Beautiful. Okay. So now we roll. 
roll a die for each item. So we roll two dice and we're looking for double successes would be nice. Okay, so we get one unique and one common. Plus one spell checks, that doesn't help him. And also we have the uh, sanity saver, which doesn't really help him either. So I'm going to give both of these to a spell caster. Still better than nothing. Probably not worth the two clues I spent, but whatevs. Okay, so that is that. Let's do the mythos phase. Yablamo. Oh no, Independent Square. There's already a gate there. So that is a monster surge. So how many monsters have we got on the table? We've got one, two monsters on the table, plus eight. That gives us a, mo a monster count of 10. So we're not going to get a surge when Cat's having a spastic attack, running around like a mad thing. Okay, so we need to draw eight monsters and they're all going into Independent Square. That is crazy. But because of this, half of them have to be hexagon monsters. So I'm going to draw uh, one, two, three, four. And one, two, three, four. So what have we got here? We've got a Shoggoth. We've got a Fire Vampire. Fire Vampire does not have a name. Someone told me that in my forum comments. I've got to fix that. Deep One and a zombie. So that's a moon, moon, moon. We have a plus, a diamond, and a star. And these are our hexes. Oh, and a goat spawn. Wow, that is, this is bad. Well, I guess we're going to see that time bomb thing happen sooner than we thought. Because we actually have a star movement and we have a hexagon movement. But with flying guys, when they move, if there is someone in the adjacent street, they move to them, not the sky. So normally he would move to here. And of course, all the hexagons would move to here. The goat spawn would move twice. But we actually have the corralling going on. If a monster would enter the same area as an investigator with a bass token during the mythos phase, the monster remains where it is instead. That means none of those monsters move. They're completely stuck. So we don't have no monster movement at all because he does have a bass token. So who's got the time bomb? This guy. So he goes... Oh, he's going first next turn. That screws everything up. He's got a great sneak. I guess this guy does. One, two, three, four. I have to figure out. I'll figure out off camera, but I've got to figure out a way I can get the time bomb into there. Because we are one, two, three, we're eight, nine, ten. So we're at ten, right? You know what I might do? I might add a new token to this mod. Where is it? Uh, components. And this is this is what we're up to. Maybe I'd do it like this. So that's what we're actually up, up to. And this is uh, max level. I don't know, whatever. The point is we're, we're at 10 monsters right now. That means the next, the next time a mythos opens, we're going to get three more monsters, which means we'll have one, two terror levels will go up. So we have to kill a bunch of monsters this turn. How does this thing work again? Uh, okay, this goes off in the upkeep, which means we have to have at least one more Mythos card open. So unless someone can come in here, sneak past the majority of these and kill a couple of them, we're in a lot of trouble. Oh no, this is bad. This is really bad. Okay, I'm back. I uh, had a little problem there. Something's wrong with my monitor and it got unplugged somehow. Like it, like the cord fell out the back or something and it uh, turned off my monitor, which 
flipped my graphic cards because it didn't detect the monitor, so it flipped it to the other monitor and the whole recording crashed. So you missed me going on and on and on about how upset I am at how bad the board looks. If only we didn't put this guy here. If we didn't put this guy here, this guy would have moved into the sky and a whole bunch of monsters would have moved out into the streets where I could easily kill them. And instead, they're all stuck in the, in the Independence Square and I've got to somehow get a guy in there and kill at least three monsters and avoid all the rest. So, I mean, this is, we're in a bad situation. I think the terror level is definitely going to go up next turn. We do have something around, someone's got a, here we are. We do have the director's diary. So we can discard this when the terror level increases to reduce the amount which is increases by one. That's going to help us. Because basically, I want to try and get a whole bunch of common items before I move over to the curiosity shop. We know that the curiosity shop has a elder sign at the bottom. But yeah, this is not good. We do have this thing here. So we can actually pull all the monsters out of that location, which might be the best way to do it. Because we can pull the monsters out. Uh, it's it's going to be very, very difficult. But yeah, basically him having the bass token has completely, really, really, really ruined things. Because we would have been able to kill some monsters using the agents. And uh, we would have been able to... Oh, that happens in the next upkeep. Yeah, but whatever. The point is that not having the monsters run into the streets means that it's a lot harder for us to actually kill them. So you're screwing me over, Bass. Well, let's put that back in your face. Uh, but there's no Doom token, at least. And also, you didn't see it, but there was a clue at the unnameable. And it says, place two clue tokens at every Elder Sign, which unfortunately, we don't have any Elder Signs. So that's about that. Now, we do have one, two... We've got two people who are capable of closing gates right now. Plus we have an elder sign that is easy to get. So we've got three closed gates on the books. Now remember, we are playing with gate burst. So I like to close gates uh, in one go. I like to get two or three closed and then close the rest in one go. So we're almost ready to really start heading to the other worlds and exploring the other planets. But I tell you what, this is... Uh, this is not a particularly good looking board right now. Okay, that's it. Hopefully this time it recorded right and uh, you missed my complete whinging and complaining about the unfairness of Rochelle. Rochelle has not been my fans this, this game. For those of you who don't know, Rochelle is who I call the goddess of dice. Her name is Roll Shell and uh, Rochelle is a bitch. I'll see you guys next time.